Michelle Valentine's show. I am Michelle Valentine. I'm Casey Blake. And tonight's show, we have, oh, we have visited some great places. One of them is one of the most romantic restaurants in Orlando. It is so romantic. We had a great time. Fantastic restaurant in town. Food was incredible. Mm -hmm. And the dessert was great. And wasn't there some wine involved? <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> Absolutely. And a special guest on the show tonight, we have a psychotherapist. He specializes in love and relationships and singles, just about what this show is about. And he had some very helpful information, and he's going to tell you some interesting facts. Uh, what else do we have? <gasps> At the end of the show, we're going to yes. feature two singles from the Orlando area, be a male mm -hmm. and a female. Very good looking. Absolutely. Both Absolutely. very good looking. Always. Great packaged people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I want you to have some pen and paper out so uh, you can be ready. Uh, we're going to give you an email address, we're going to give you a phone number, and so you can perhaps contact. Absolutely. So stay tuned, maybe grab yourself a glass of wine, sit back, mm -hmm. relax. If you're with a loved one, sit next to the loved one and watch the rest of the show. Stay tuned. If you're enjoying the Michelle Valentine Show, you will love her new travel TV show, Love, Eat, Travel. Follow Michelle Valentine as she travels the world, showcasing the most beautiful destinations, unique adventures, romantic things to do, delicious foods, and more. Visit www.loveeattravel.tv for more information about an upcoming TV show. Hi, this is Michelle Valentine, and I would love if you followed me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Be sure to visit my website, michellevalentine.tv, for more information, read thousands of interesting blog posts, watch videos, enter sweepstakes, and more. Also, be sure to join my email list to receive my free weekly e-newsletter. Recently, we had a chance to visit Cafe Trastevere in beautiful downtown Orlando. What a romantic visit it was. We had a little trouble choosing just the right wine for this romantic atmosphere, so we let our waiter Paul decide. His selection was the perfect beginning to a wonderful evening. Enjoy your wine. Thank you, oh, Paul. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. What do you think of that? Good choice. As we enjoyed our wine, we couldn't help but notice the mouth-watering aroma coming from the kitchen. There were hints of fresh basil, pepper, and other delicious ingredients. Chef Penelope was working some culinary magic, preparing an Italian-style mahi-mahi entree. parchment paper with red pomodoro tomato sauce, olive oil, nice. garlic, capers, black catamala olives, and portobello mushrooms. Just when we thought the evening couldn't possibly get any better, Penelope had yet another surprise in the works, which happened to be the best part of the meal, dessert, a necessity for any romantic experience. It's going to be. Here you go. Two hot espressos. Ooh. And fresh tiramisu, which is ladyfinger soaked in espresso, topped with mascarpone cheese and a little cocoa on top. Oh and my. Fresh wine. My. Which That's is egg custard topped with a caramel sauce. Okay. Excellent. Thanks, Enjoy. Paul. Thank you, Paul. This looks delicious. 
Tiramisu, one of my favorites. <laughs> Oh. Excellent for you. This is wonderful. Well, this is out. <laughs> Delicious. Yeah. Would you like to try some tiramisu? Absolutely. All right. There we go. Mm -hmm. This is mm -hmm. so romantic. Look at these little cups. Excellent. <laughs> well, We've had a great time at Cafe Trust Every here in downtown Orlando. And special thanks to the staff, Nicole, the owner, proprietor, and our waiter, Paul. Paul and Yes. Dave. And we've had a wonderful time. Great evening. Great day. Salute. Salute. A little espresso, and our evening was complete. Cheers to a perfect romantic date. If you're enjoying the Michelle Valentine Show, you will love her new travel TV show, Love, Eat, Travel. Follow Michelle Valentine as she travels the world, showcasing the most beautiful destinations, unique adventures, romantic things to do, delicious foods, and more. Visit www.loveeattravel.tv for more information about her upcoming TV show. Hi, this is Michelle Valentine, and I would love if you followed me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Be sure to visit my website, michellevalentine.tv, for more information, read thousands of interesting blog posts, watch videos, enter sweepstakes, and more. Also, be sure to join my email list to receive my free weekly e-newsletter. Are you wondering where all the quality singles are? Singles that are attractive, educated, and financially secure? Hello, I'm Michelle Valentine, and I've helped thousands of singles live a happier life, and I can help you too. Clients and members include millionaires, models, doctors, lawyers, and teachers. So call us for your complimentary consultation. Welcome back. We are here with a special guest today, David Bloodgood, who is a psychotherapist in Winter Park. Tell us, what is the difference between a psychotherapist, a psychologist, and a psychiatrist? Well, a psychiatrist is first and foremost a medical doctor. If you go to any therapist, any kind of therapist, and they feel you need psychotropic medications, they will need to send you to a medical doctor. He's the only one who can write prescriptions. Okay. Psychologists traditionally have been people who do testing and do research, but they also do therapy as well. In my office, we have two people who are psychologists or psychiatrists. Okay. And you have five? There's a total of five in our office. Okay. Uh, each person deals with a wide variety of people. I myself deal primarily with couples and singles. Mm -hmm. In fact, I go around the country and I speak to church groups and other singles groups about oh, yeah. singles issues. So you do seminars, or you just you just this is public speaking that you're doing seminars. Seminars, and uh, so you you do specialize in love relationships, so or problems in love relationships, right? I would like to think it's love relationships, <laughs> but it seems as if pro uh -huh. problems frequently take precedence. Uh huh. So what what are um, what are like two common issues that that you think what what caused people to come to see you they go gosh we really have a problem we need to we need to go and see you well it's interesting in all relationships the two most fundamental issues seem to be passion and safety uh, there are relationships which are all passion they have a tendency not to last too long there are relationships that are extremely safe they tend to be boring uh, people need a real balance of that in their life mm -hmm. and achieving that balance can be difficult mm -hmm. Let's see, passion and safety. Well, it seems that if you have passion and you have safety, that would make a good relationship, right? <laughs> but it, too, much of, too much of a good thing is not a good thing. Too much of either one right. doesn't work. And as we know now, uh, passion tends to be driven by serotonin and a sort of a chemical rush in our brain. Mm -hmm. It doesn't last very long for mm -hmm. most people. If they're lucky, it's six months. Mm -hmm. uh, in some people, it's an even shorter time than that. Mm -hmm. If the passion is gone and 
you find there is no safety, then the relationship comes to a pretty quick close. Is it mainly just talking to try to find that happy median, or is you, it, you really find that uh, having the outside source, the, you know, yourself, the therapist? As a counselor? Well, I do two things. I work with individuals who are unsure about the relationship they're in, either about the role of their partner or what their role is in the relationship. I also work directly with couples who are trying to evaluate whether or not their relationship can sustain the long term. So now, don't, now I would think that if a couple cares about each other that much, they want to stay together to seek professional help, that there's, there has to be some sort of um, uh, some good bond going on there to begin with. To it's a good sign when they do come in, and that's a real change. It used to be that uh, therapists dealt primarily with married couples who were having problems in their marriage. I would say over half of the clients I see now are single couples who may or may not be getting ready to make a marriage commitment, but before they do that, they really just want to examine their relationship, and sometimes having an individual there who can give them an objective view really helps. Well, that, that's interesting, especially with so many couples now who live together. They do this living together arrangement, and then they, they think, well, gosh, if we're, not getting, you know, if we're not getting along right now, maybe we definitely need to go and see a counselor before we get married because there will be unsolved issues. And, well, and that's, that's very true, but also many people who are getting along. Just It's an enormous step to make a lifetime mm -hmm, commitment. Mm -hmm. Although I should say that when people have been living together for a long time, their relationship dissolves. It's too bad very often they don't get the kind of, of support and the kind of sympathy that married couples do, and yet there are very close ties that develop. Obviously, if you've lived with someone for a number of years, there's just as much grief and just as much heartbreak when that relationship mm -hmm. ends. Do you, do you find often that living together like that uh, dissolves into a sort of complacency? Well, that's that safety issue that we mm -hmm. talked about, where it becomes safe and it's content and it's convenient but it lacks any spark of romance or love. And that's another thing that counseling can often do. It can rekindle that just by letting people rethink and relook at how their relationship began. Whatever brought them together in the first place doesn't die out, it doesn't disappear. It may be masked by problems or circumstances, but that spark of love is still there. You, I've, I've been reading so much about, um, there's like typically three stages to a, a relationship. There's the first six months, first six months which, it, which is the passion stage and all that good stuff. And then they say, okay, if you can reach the six, if you can go beyond the six months, then that, that is, uh, that's beyond the infatuation stage. And then you that's actually right. reach the real love stage. So is, is, do you think, do you agree with this, this type of stages to a uh, Well, I do, and it's that middle stage that's, that's difficult. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. there's that passion stage is where um, your partner comes down and eats breakfast and you look over and think, isn't that cute <laughs> the way she eats her toast? It just, it warms my heart. Six months into it, you look across the table and think, if she nibbles on the crust like that one more time, I'm out of here. Uh -huh. And that's, that's really when the real work begins, when that passion is gone right. and you really get to right. know each other on an individual right. basis. Well, you start seeing each other through, through without looking through the rose-colored glasses. Precisely. You're going, well, you know, he's really not that cute in the morning anymore, you know? Yes. <laughs> you know, that, that robe that he wears every morning, you know, that, that can, it can really get to you. And, and, and then you'll start focusing on these little things, and it slowly breaks things away. And, and then it's, you know, and that's what happens. Well, nature is gracious. It gives us sort of a Novocaine that it injects into our right. reason and lets us overlook <laughs> a lot of things that uh, later when they come to the fore, we think, how could I have thought that? Exactly. Let me ask you one more thing. What uh, do you feel, what, if people are in a relationship for a while, uh, I guess, say, if your clients come in to visit, uh, do you uh, prescribe any sort of structure or like time? Uh, you know, you're mentioning, Michelle had mentioned the stages. Um, is there time to, to get over a, a, a certain, say, say there was some uh, a terrible fight in the relationship? Is there any sort of time to work through any sort of pattern like that? Or Well, it depends on what the fight is over. And, and once again, that safety issue comes up. Clearly the thing that most couples, both men and women, find to be the most important thing in their relationship, at least typically, is fidelity. If it's a fidelity issue, those can take a long time to resolve. Very often the couple just has to accept the fact that for the rest of their relationship, this will be a sore point. It won't be forgotten, but it may be dealt with in a healthy enough way that they can move forward. But that's probably the single biggest one. 
the ones in the long term in the uh, safe stage that cause the most problems typically are money and sex, the same as they are for married couples. Mm -hmm. So we've been talking about your counseling uh, couples. What about uh, persons who are not involved in relationships? Do you counsel people maybe going, gosh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm 35 years old and I'm still not married yet and I haven't met that person and, and are these kind of topics of people to go yes. and see you? Maybe their, their, their commitment phobias or something like this going on? If people are in a relationship, usually the biggest problem they have is their partner. If they're not in a relationship, the biggest problem they have is they don't have a partner. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> yes, and, and very often what we can do is look at past relationships, see why those may have not been successful, what brought you into maybe a repeated pattern of relationships that aren't successful. Sometimes it's a matter of just helping people to lower their expectations. Mm -hmm. um, it's very interesting when you, when, in fact, I got a call the other day from a man who said, I've found a woman who I really enjoy her company. I really like everything about her, but I don't think she's quite perfect. Now, that's an oh. interesting, <laughs> how do you respond to that? Right, um, right. Not I've, perfect in what way, though? Physically or career? Well, he wasn't what was exactly he okay. sure, but she wasn't uh -huh. just quite perfect. And mm. Of course, it assumes that he's perfect. Right. <laughs> and he just hasn't found the ideal mate. Uh -huh. but, but realistically, we all have to have uh, expectations that can be met by another human being, and there's very few perfect people out there. Mm -hmm. Well, there are, you know, an exorbitant amount of variables out there. Why people, I guess, are single? Is there just a single most common one? A single fault, say, for a male and a female. Oh, a single fault. Well, or, I say a fault at being single, but uh, yeah, wait a minute here. Yeah, I would say, you know, is there people that are really striving to find that relationship? Where? Where is their problem lying, do you, do you feel? Well, of course, it's interesting that 25 years ago, uh, being single really was a fault. And if you were single, the question was, what's wrong with you? Mm -hmm. Today, I would say the most common reason people are single is by choice. When they choose not to be single but continue to find themselves in a single state, very often it comes down to things that they've experienced in their childhood. Even though they are loath to admit it, there's some kind of a commitment, reluctance there based on something they've seen in their life that leads them to believe it's just not safe to make that, that kind of commitment. Mm -hmm. I think we could cover all that right now, though. It's a difficult issue. Those are the kinds of issues that take longer to deal with. I, I would like to uh, assure people that coming in to see a counselor doesn't mean signing your life away for the next five years. Uh, traditional psychotherapy often does go on two or three times a week for years, but today most people come to counselors expecting to visit three or four times and to find a real solution to their problems, and that's what we try to give them. So I know the, the, a big question that people always has, have is, okay, I have this problem, now how long is it going to take until I get it fixed? So uh, we, you know, we know here that it could take, it could take months, it could take years, but Generally, how long before someone actually goes through this process, or especially couples, how long do they, what kind of a process do they have to go to before they go, okay, either we're really not supposed to be together or let's continue this relationship and make this work? In my practice, one of the things I offer is a three-session couples counseling evaluation. And that's really all it is. It isn't that I'll solve everyone's problems in three sessions. But in three sessions, we should be able to take a sheet of paper and write down the three or four most significant issues, what it would take to solve them, and what it would be like in their relationship if those things were solved. Now, from that point, very often, they can just take that sheet of paper and go home and work on it themselves. Mm -hmm. In other cases, it's, it's issues that they may feel they need another three, four, six sessions to come in and really talk through. Mm -hmm. I have to ask this question. Do you have more female singles that come to you for, for help, or do you have more males? More females. And How uh, did I know that? Yes. How did I know that? <laughs> well, if you've ever been to a singles group, like a church group or something, traditionally Absolutely. there's 26 women right. and six very fortunate men. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. so. Exactly. Well, that's about it. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank nice you. Really Thank talking you. With it's both great of you. informing our readers, our, our viewers over here, of all the uh, great things that can happen to them if they just make that next step and make something happen. It's frightening, but it's well worth the effort. Right, right. Well, thank you for joining thank us. Thank you. We'll be right back.
about uh, how about luck? How's, how's, it, how's it working tonight for you? It's working pretty good. <laughs> I got a couple smiles. That's excellent. You got a great one from your sister there too. <laughs> cool. Good talking to you. Thanks. All right. Thanks. If you're enjoying the Michelle Valentine Show, you will love her new travel TV show, Love Eat Travel. Follow Michelle Valentine as she travels the world, showcasing the most beautiful destinations, unique adventures, romantic things to do, delicious foods, and more. Visit www.loveeattravel.tv for more information about her upcoming TV show. Hi, this is Michelle Valentine, and I would love if you followed me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Be sure to visit my website, michellevalentine.tv, for more information, read thousands of interesting blog posts, watch videos, enter sweepstakes, and more. Also, be sure to join my email list to receive my free weekly e-newsletter. Hello, welcome back. I am excited to announce Cricket Glennon, who is our featured single today. And Cricket, I've known you for a while now, and I'm so excited to have you on the show. Thanks for having me, Michelle. You're welcome. Hopefully we can find a great man for you out there in our viewing audience. And uh, so tell us about yourself. You're 32. I'm 32 years old. I am professionally employed. I work in uh, the field of professional sports. Sports. Men, did you hear that? Sports. Um, I've uh, been there uh, for about uh, two years now. I really enjoy sports. It's a big part of my life. Mm -hmm. um, I love working out. I love going to the beach. I love riding bikes. I also like uh, art museums, theater, movies, traveling, all kinds of fun, fun stuff. What kinds of traveling? Weekend getaways? Weekend getaways are great, but I also enjoy, you know, vacations. And with my busy schedule, I don't often get to go on vacations. Mm -hmm. But it's something, something mm -hmm. that I like to do. Okay. So you are one of these, you know, happening, attractive, going somewhere type of females of the 90s. So what kind of man are you seeking? The uh, kind of man I'm looking for should probably be uh, fun, intelligent, um, um, attractive, reasonably attractive, with a good sense of humor, a great personality, um, somebody that's, that's, that knows where they're going as well, who just doesn't sit there but likes to get out and experience life and all the different uh, things that life has to offer and likes to do it with somebody special. All right, let's go back to the physical attributes because there's something that you're very fond of in men. Yes, I like, <laughs> I like um, larger men, uh -huh. taller men, uh -huh. just, you know, bigger guys. I also like um, men with red hair. Really? Yep. Redheads see, are uh, I, See, now that's great. So all, of, all the redheads out there apply. Yep. There aren't too many in Orlando. Really? But uh, you, you catch them every, every once in a while. Now there, was, now, there was one time we went out. It was at some Irish pub downtown, and uh, there were like five redheaded guys lined up, and you were in your glory. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. And um, redheads are special people. Uh-huh. Well, you're a redhead, so there we go. Um, any, any last things out there that you want people to know? Uh, just um, looking to make some friends and find a special person to spend time with. Okay. Yeah. Great. All right, viewers. Anyone out there interested in Cricket Glennon, a professional, 32-year-old, attractive female? If you are a redheaded, that's a plus. If you're a big guy, football players apply. She loves sports. So if you're interested, call the number on the screen. Um, we have, what is it, Michelle Valentine at MailCity.com, and, uh, or they can send in a letter to the address as well, and uh, maybe we'll help you find your match. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks, Ricket. <laughs> or I'll start finding romantic. Any activities? Activity, I just like Church Street. I like being downtown at Church Street. It's fun. There's a lot of different things to do, so. Pretty festive about if you're enjoying the Michelle Valentine Show, you will love her new travel TV show, Love Eat Travel. Follow Michelle Valentine as she travels the world, showcasing the most beautiful destinations, unique adventures, romantic things to do, delicious foods, and more. Visit www.loveeattravel.tv 
for more information about an upcoming TV show. Hi, this is Michelle Valentine, and I would love if you followed me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Be sure to visit my website, michellevalentine.tv, for more information, read thousands of interesting blog posts, watch videos, enter sweepstakes, and more. Also, be sure to join my email list to receive my free weekly e-newsletter. Ladies, I'd like to introduce this week's single male. His name's Rand Brotman. Actually, he's a friend of mine. I met him at the grand opening of his bar and club downtown. Uh, you want to tell us a little bit about your establishment? Sure. Uh, we just opened up Yuba Bar and Club. It's upstairs of Mulvaney's. We have the second level of two buildings and an outside patio in the back. We just did our grand opening about a week ago. Been open two months. And you two were there to help celebrate for us. And uh, we're doing all right. It's an excellent club indeed. Um, you're a single fellow, Rand, so uh, tell uh, ladies out there what you're looking for. Well, I just moved up to Orlando about two months ago from West Palm Beach, South Florida. And I've been working a lot, so I haven't really done much on the dating scene, but always interested in going out for a nice dinner and a nice glass of wine. Where's a place other than your own establishment? Where do you find in town to be a nice romantic spot? Well, I haven't been around town too much. Um, I mean, I know some of the restaurants that I'm familiar with, like Houston's and, um, you know, Pebbles is nice. It's right there. And I'm sure there's quite a few others I haven't even experienced yet because I've been working every day. I hear you. Once you get some time, what do you, uh, what do you plan on doing? You what kind of activities you like out there? Well, I try to get to the gym a couple times a week. Um, try to do a little cooking at the house. And just right now, just try to get this business off the ground, basically. You know, but when I do get some time, I'm sleeping. <laughs> try to catch what, up. What kind of cooking? What kind of a cook? Are you with the, the wok and all the accessories, or are you? Yeah, I like to do that a little pasta bit. Pasta stuff, or what? Yeah, that with big hungry jack that, you know, goes in the microwave. Really? <laughs> <laughs> the apple cobbler's great. No wonder you're still single. Yeah, well. <laughs> You know, you got to spend your money in the right places. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the next question? Well, it's obviously Rand's uh, <laughs> tired of spending money on just himself. So ladies, you need to give him a call and have him share some of that. Oh, uh, gosh. Yeah. But uh, you can get in touch with Rand here at uh, Michelle Valentine's email address, michellevalentine at mailcity.com. And uh, anything else you want to add? Uh, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What kind of a woman are you looking for? We have no idea what you're looking for. Well, I guess I like an athletic young lady, um, somebody that uh, doesn't want to play games anymore and just wants to kind of shoot from the hip and kind of knows where, the, where she is and not a whole lot of uh, insecurities. You know, with my kind of a schedule and the kind of person I am, I can't, somebody really has to know who they are in order to uh, get along with me pretty well. So 